At COP26 in Glasgow, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau uh, recommitted Canada to immediately capping oil and gas emissions. Well, a new poll has found that two thirds of Canadians agree that that's a good thing. So I'm going to talk to Nick Nanos from Nanos Research about that poll. Uh, welcome to the interview, Nick. Great to join you. Okay, so that's two thirds of Canadians rarely agree on anything. So is it fair to say that you know most of the Canada uh, most of Canada is behind this policy? Oh, absolutely. And you know the inter the kicker in this question was that we added even if jobs are at risk. So it wasn't kind of like what I'll say, pie in the sky, let's just cap emissions and, and uh, on the oil and gas sector. It was a trade-off because you know we all know that there are trade-offs for all public policy decisions. So what's actually quite striking is that two out of three Canadians are good with these types of caps, even if jobs might be at risk. Now, big surprise, the one, uh, the one outlier in all of this would be individuals who happen to live in the prairies, which is kind of the energy heartland, at least for oil and gas uh, in Canada. They're, they're less likely to be supportive, but once you step out of that, um, you get pretty good support, right, basically right across the board in, in all the other regions across the country. And as you note, uh, the, uh, the regions that support the cap are ones that generally vote uh, liberal. Yeah, for sure. You know, when we look at, uh, you know, places, you know, and a lot of the regions, what's interesting is, you know, when we look at Quebec and British Columbia, for example, and also even Atlantic Canada, actually, the fact of the matter is, is that a lot of the regions vote liberal, except for the prairies right now in our current uh, political environment. But I think uh, we're at a place in time and, you know, the, the, the fires and now the floods in British Columbia has really put it into focus for Canadians that, uh, climate change is an even more urgent problem that needs to be addressed. And that I think Canadians are ready to move from talk to action. Uh, and they also understand that there are sacrifices that are gonna to need to be made, that Canadians are gonna, and you know, the thing is, this is, isn't just putting a cap on emissions. I think uh, there's, a, there's a broader narrative that's very important is that Canadians are gonna to have to change their behavior in terms of consumption and stuff like that. And that it's not just about big companies and big emitter, emitters uh, changing their behavior. It's about everyone changing their behavior in order to uh, hit some of these targets, which are quite aggressive. And it seems like there's a fair amount of support in the country as well for a, a just transition strategy that would have some resources to help workers that are maybe laid off in the oil and gas industry to retrain uh, for, uh, you know, maybe green energy jobs or some other kind of job. Yeah, and it's just one of those things where, you know, in the true Canadian sense, there's, uh, there's a lot of compassion for people that uh, happen to be in a, in a sector that will be disrupted uh, and uh, will not be as strong. You know, the, the fact of the matter is, I think what Canadians would like is some sort of orderly transition uh, that uh, to kind of put a stake in the ground that a transition will take place, that carbon will be uh, a less important part of the economy. It'll still be there, but it'll be much less important than it is today and has been in the past. Uh, but that for uh, but that we need some type of uh, support for workers and for the for the sector to transition to where it needs to be in the future, which is being less carbon intensive and less focused and reliant on carbon than now or in the past. What's your take on how the uh, Prairie Premiers are going to respond to this? Because it seems like with this kind of political support from other regions in the Canada. Uh, Prime Minister Trudeau will have some steel in his spine, uh, even though he's actually been, you know, for uh, on issues that have been of importance to Alberta, for instance, Trans Mountain Expansion Pipeline. Uh, he bought, the, I mean, the Canada bought the company and is building it, uh, you know, and probably cost uh, the Liberals, uh, you know, seats in British Columbia. Nevertheless, uh, they've forged ahead with it. So in some ways, the, the political calculations aren't, don't always seem to be as important to the government when they've decided on a course of action as they have here. Yeah. You know what, Markham? If you had told me in 2015, before the federal election, when the liberals won that election, that the liberals would be investing in a pipeline, I would have said, you're smoking something. Because uh, you know they're very, they had staked out a very clear position on the on the environment, but you know the thing is it, it speaks to their, a certain level of pragmatism for the liberals that uh, even though they they are very focused and supportive of the environment and moving forward that they there is some pragmatism there uh, at least 
But you know, the thing is, is for the for the Trudeau Liberals, they don't really need the prairies to win an election currently in the current uh, structure. Uh, but I think what they would like to do is to work with the provinces. And let's go figure. If Jason Kenney can accept a national child care program that's subsidized by the Liberals, why couldn't he engage the Liberals on Alberta's long-term energy strategy that is greener than it is today? And uh, I think, Markham, to your point, one of the things that we do know is that premiers always welcome money from the federal government. Uh, so, you know, I think if the if the liberals can can create a strategy that can engage the prairie provinces, specifically Saskatchewan and Alberta, can engage them and to nudge them forward towards a, a low carbon uh, future, uh, I think I, I, I can't see how the premiers would turn down the money uh, because they know that there's a wall that's going to be hit someday and that they need to get ahead of that. My guess on this, uh, Nick, is that where the conflict is going to come in is on timing, because the uh, strategies that the well, Alberta in particular uh, is, is putting a lot of eggs in the carbon capture and storage basket, and that takes a, a long time to do the engineering, build the infrastructure. The, the experts that I've talked to think that, you know, there won't be any carbon capture and storage at scale until the late 2020s, whereas, you know, Prime Minister Trudeau wants to cap the, the emissions now. And I think that's where the, the, uh, the conflict is going to come in. And then, you know, it, what do you make of the fact that the oil sands companies announced this uh, uh, net zero by, by 2050 pathways initiative? Uh, they say it's going to cost 75 billion. They want governments to, to put in 50 billion. And the feds weren't part of the announcement, haven't committed anything, despite Kenny pressuring them for, for money. Uh, what, what's your take on that? Well, I think for some of those majors, you know, they know that they have to say something on this and have to have some sort of transition and are just trying to, what do we call it? Shame. It's a shame strategy. Shame the government to say, yes, we're willing to get here, but we need someone else to pay the bills. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that those are products that will not be used and will not be in demand in 2050, at least, especially as much in demand as it is today. So it's kind of, it's kind of like pay me to pay me to stop selling things, uh, which is kind of, I think, uh, a bit of an odd strategy. Um, I think, uh, I think for the, for the federal government, the better strategy is to engage the provincial governments on uh, transitions for workers and uh, and to invest in technology uh, because you know I'm not sure how politically how much political juice there is in any kind of perception that the government is subsidizing big oil um, to transition from a fuel that there will be less demand for and I just think you know like think of it this way people need help small businesses are struggling there are sectors of the economy that need help um, and, uh, you know, for, for big oil, I think their, their better strategy is to work in partnership with the provincial government and the federal government on a strategy and not to think that there's going to be some sort of uh, outright bailout. Well, Nick, thank you very much for your insights. Always appreciate it. Yep. Good to talk to. Cheers.